שלום לכם, אחים ואחיות יקרים. אנחנו ממשיכים את הנושא שלנו. שלום לכם, אחים ואחיות יקרים. אנחנו ממשיכים את הנושא שלנו. שלום לכם, אחים ואחיות יקרים. אנחנו ממשיכים את הנושא שלנו. שלום לכם, אחים ואחיות יקרים. And now we're in part two of this subject of self-righteousness. Last time we talked about the problem of our sinful nature, that we are born with this sinful nature, and this prevents us, prevents each one of us from being perfect and always doing the right thing before God. And therefore we have a problem of how then will we receive righteousness, because only the righteous will inherit eternal life. We saw that there are two ways to receive righteousness. One is through keeping the law, which is impossible again from the same reason of our sinful nature. And the other way is by faith. And then we already saw that before Yeshua came to the world, those who believed, God counted that faith as righteousness. That doesn't mean that they were perfect. It doesn't mean they didn't make mistakes or sinned. Our father Abraham, he lied. He said, Sarah is my sister. He endangered her twice he did this. One time, not just once, but still he believed in God and God counted this faith as righteousness. So then, I want to continue today and to develop this subject of justification that comes to us through Yeshua, by the sacrifice of Yeshua. God sent him. He offers himself on the cross. The Romans crucified him. Our religious people leadership gave him to the Romans and demanded that they would crucify him and they did it and Yeshua then <coughs> came in order to sacrifice himself he came in order to fulfill this plan because he wants to take the punishment for all of our sins and to give us his justification his righteousness so he paid the price that I was supposed to pay for my sin really who crucified Yeshua me and He died for me, for me, because to justify me and all of us who hear this message and want to receive the faith for each one of us, he sacrificed himself. And then we read in Romans chapter 3, verses 20 to 28. It's a whole passage what deals with this subject. In verse 20, Paul says, who himself was one of the Pharisees, one of the leading Pharisees at that time, He was a disciple of the Rabbi Gamaliel. And he writes for us, Because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. So like we saw in the last time, the law is good. It was given by God. It's holy. But the problem is that we cannot, nobody can keep it. Not even Moses, our father, could keep it. And he failed. He wasn't allowed to enter the land of Canaan because of it. And therefore, nobody can be justified. He says here, through the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. So what it does say, but through the law comes the knowledge of sin. The law emphasizes sin, our failures. Now we'll continue to read verse 21, Romans chapter 3. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And even the righteousness of God through faith in Messiah Yeshua for all those who believe, there is no distinction. There's no distinction between a Jew or Gentile. Whoever receives the faith in the Messiah Yeshua and lives real faith, he can receive forgiveness and atonement. And at that moment when our sins are erased, are forgiven, because of that sacrifice that was already offered 2,000 years ago, then we receive from God His righteousness. His justification. For they have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Jews and Gentiles, and being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in the Messiah Yeshua. And why free? Because we didn't pay for it. We can't buy, not in with money and not with our good deeds, we can't buy this justification. We can only in faith receive it as a gift. It's the grace of God. Because of his love that he gives to us this faith this justification so then we are gift by his grace through the redemption of the Messiah Yeshua the redemption was that he had to pay for us he had to pay the price 
in order to draw me out from that horrible future in eternal hell of fire. He paid the price for me and for everyone else who hears this message and wants to receive forgiveness and to find redemption. Verse 25, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God he passed over the sins previously committed. For the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at this present time, so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Yeshua. So God would be the justifier of the one who has faith in Yeshua. So before I go on, I want to also say that Adam and uh, Noah, they were justified by their faith. Habakkuk said, the just shall live by faith. It's faith in God, and God who is great in grace, he forgives. He doesn't just forgive. He doesn't just let it go. But God, who made sure there was a payment paid for it, and so he sacrificed his Isaac, Yeshua the Messiah, to pay that price for me and for us. Therefore, where, where then is boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By works? But no, but by a law of faith. But it's by faith. Or is God the God of Jews only? Or is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Since indeed God, who will justify the circumcised by faith, and the uncircumcised through faith is one. So we all receive this salvation, this forgiveness, this justification by Yeshua the Messiah, whether we're Jews or whether we're Gentiles. I read to verse 30. I added two more verses. So then we have in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. So because of Yeshua, then now we have peace with God. The same relationship that was broken in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve chose not to listen to the Satan and not to God. That same relationship that was broken now is restored. We are reconnected through Yeshua's offering. We've been forgiven and now I have peace with God and I become a child of God, a son of God. So then we need faith as I already explained the last time, I want to broaden on it a little bit now. We're not talking about theoretical faith, but rather practical faith. We read in James chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. Living faith. It's important to understand it. But those who are saying, okay, so you believe, but you can continue to sin and you've gotten forgiveness. No, that's not what it means. To believe and to live your life of righteousness that comes because of your faith. And the difference then is that God then is also within us in His Holy Spirit. And He also helps us. So James chapter 2 verses 21 to 23 gives an answer to those who don't understand this. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar? So here we've gotten back to Abraham who was justified by faith. But here it says, his faith brought it to him where he was ready to offer his Isaac. See, that faith was working with his works, and as a result of the works, faith was perfected. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Verse 24. So you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. So we are called then to pursue righteousness and to use that righteousness to receive in faith and by gift from God and to go and walk in that faith and to pursue that holiness, to pursue that holiness without which no one will see God. We never teach, no way, that you can continue on in sin. No, no. The great advantage we have in the New Testament is that I have a sacrifice and I don't need to go to the temple and go to the, the this past, Passover days and to go to the high priest and make an offering through him. No, I have my high priest in heaven, Yeshua, who prays and intercedes for me. 
and that when I've failed, and I can immediately go back and repent and go and ask forgiveness. But I do live my life, and God sees my heart. He's the one who judges it. I don't do it. I don't, I'm not called to do it, and I don't want to do it before people. But rather, to remember that God is the one who looks. So then we saw there's two ways to receive righteousness. We talked about last time about the works of the law. And I have to broaden on this here. It's not just the works of the law, but actually all the work lists of commands, any other list of commands that people have invented, whether it's um, religious denominations or others, or lists of even believers have made, to say that it's forbidden this and this and this and this, and if you do this and this and this, you'll be justified. No. It's not a list that God made or a list that people made. None of those can justify us. That's not the way to receive righteousness. And many believers then are in danger of falling exactly into this trap. Uh, if I do this and this and this, and I'm justified in my own eyes, and I will come to this place of self-justification. We have to be careful of this self-righteousness. We are justified by living faith. And this living faith, and this justification, this salvation that comes in the result of it, are given to us in a gift. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, Ephesians 2, 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. It's a gift that God, good God, has given to us in His great grace as He sacrificed Yeshua in order to give this, make this gift possible. So each one of us now needs to choose. So which path are we going to, through which path are we going to achieve our righteousness? Do I want to go through keeping the laws of the Torah? Then do I want to see that kind of righteousness? Or by faith in the sacrifice of Yeshua that God offers to receive the justification that He gives to us by gift? We need to choose. You can't have both. We have an example of the congregations in the place called Galatian, Galatia. It's a place called of Turkey today. It was called Asia Minor then. And they heard the gospel. These were Gentiles who heard the gospel and Jews in the synagogues who heard the gospel. And some of them came to faith in Yeshua and they joined, joined, were joined by a bunch of Gentiles also who came to faith in Yeshua. And then they began on the right foot their journey to the kingdom of heaven that follows on the narrow path. They started right, but then came false teachers who told them, no, <laughs> you need to all keep all of the law if you want to be justified. And then they got off the path and they got mixed up. Paul the Apostle writes a holy epistle and he battles in this false teaching and he reproves through one claim over another and another one how they made a mistake and why is it not right what they were saying. And in Galatians chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, there's a summary of this whole thing and it shows us how serious it was that they were trying to achieve their righteousness, their own self-righteousness, through the guard good deeds, whether they were deeds of the law or whether they were deeds that we want to do through our own deeds. And he says this, You have been severed from the Messiah, you who are seeking to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. So if you're trying to receive your righteousness through keeping the law, you then you've fallen away from grace. Grace is something that I get that I don't deserve. That's grace. But if I decide, no, I don't want it, and I don't take it, I am my own power, and I'm going to keep all the laws of the, the, the Torah. Okay, that's two ways. That's two different covenants. You got the Sinai covenant. That's in your own power. And the new covenant, that's God who's loving. I will give you my righteousness, he says. So he says then, if you then choose the different way, you're trying to be justified to receive this status of justified, that you are pure, then you don't have any more grace if you do it by the law. And you've been cut off from the Messiah because without Messiah, there's no atonement. There's no sacrifice. Briefly, you're on the way to destruction. So then each one needs to choose. Where are you going? 
right or left? In my own power, my own pride, my own self-righteousness, whether it's through the law or whether it's through my own good deeds that I can do, it doesn't really matter. My good deeds in believing lists and all kinds of believing groups have got lists. It's the same category. You've fallen away from grace and you've been cut off from the Messiah because you try to receive your righteousness that way, through your own list. And there are many examples in history and today of lists like this that people have made. Even believers have made up all kinds of whole lists of laws and rules. What color of clothes to wear and how long the sleeves need to be. And all kinds of laws like this, rules. And only if you keep all of these rules, then you're okay. And if you don't, then you're a big sinner. And this is wrong. It's not right. It's a lie. So then we need to choose. We want to continue next time and speak about specifically, more specifically about that self-justification that we need to be aware of, be careful of. Again, I wish you, brothers and sisters, a blessed rest of your day. Shalom.